For several months now, Guide has had the TB630 thermal imaging attachment on the market and it has been extremely popular since then because the device is simply unbeatable in terms of price and performance. Here and today I have the TB430 with me, the little brother of the TB630. The various similarities and differences between the two devices are the subject of this video. By the way, we will cover this little fellow again in a later video. That will be exciting too. I'll display the technical data of both devices. We will first talk about the things that particularly impressed me with the TB630, the power supply. Two batteries power the device and according to the manufacturer, they last for 12 hours in the TB430. The dimension of 30 millimeters by 8 millimeters by 8 millimeters make the device compact. The low set eyepiece group is well designed. This ensures that the design is very flat and the device does not build up downward. This gives you a good chance if you have an open sight, meaning rear sight and front sight, that it can stay on because the device with an ER or ER optics does not protrude beyond the edge of the glass. With a driven hunt scope, it's different but it also depends on the height of the mount. The device is small but also light, bare, it weighs just under 400 grams, but who would use the thing completely bare? With batteries and adapter, we stay roughly under 600 gry, which is a significant weight advantage compared to other devices or older tube devices. The software also has great functionality. In addition to the usual black hot, white hot, and so on, all color modes, the menu in the device is customizable. It's good if you have a base magnification or a large base magnification on your scope. You can make the menu smaller. You can move it to the left, right, top or bottom corner so it doesn't bother you. Also great for scatterbrains like me, a video definitely starts when you take a shot. You can also turn it off if you don't want it. But basically, it's a great feature to, well, you know, hunting fever, you're a bit nervous, to record what you've just done and be able to watch it later. It can be quite helpful in a tracking situation to show the tracker what actually happened. There are also five weapon profiles on board, so you can zero in all your favorite weapons with the device and save the point of impact. Just like with the Big Brother, the software integration is really well done. The Wi-Fi connection is stable, so there are no dropouts, and you can manage almost all functions, I think except for zeroing through the software or the app. And what is really great in the class of affordable thermal imaging attachments is that you have an internal focus. So you are not forced to adjust your focus through the lens, but you can use the two focus wheels here on the right and left side. This is good for both left-handed and right-handed shooters. So before we get to the main differences, one last similarity is the 35 MMNF germanium lens. This causes the major difference between the TB630 and the TB430 with the sensor. The big brother, the TB630, has a sensor with a pixel size of 640x512. In combination with the 35mm lens, this creates a gigantic field of view of 22 meters. That also means that objects are initially farther away, much farther away in the base magnification, and I have to bring them a little bit closer with my rifle scope using the variable magnification. With a 400x sensor combined with a 35mm lens, objects are simply zoomed in closer. They are just closer. The objects or the game body are still essentially represented by the same number of pixels or just closer. This does definitely reduce the field of view, but that can indeed certainly be intentional as I want the game or animal to appear closer in my optics from the start. What also differs slightly is the value for temperature contrast. The big brother, the TB630, has a net D value of less than or equal to 20 millikelvin. This means it can display temperature differences in the range of 20 millikelvin. The TB430 has 25 millikelvin. Honestly, that's an academic value. It doesn't matter at all in practice. You can't see that from the whole story. Both sensors are extremely temperature sensitive and are capable of displaying the game body sharply defined and in great detail. I briefly mentioned it earlier, the two 18650 batteries power the TB430 for 12 hours, while the TB630 lasts for 10 hours. However, you do have some influence over this. The included batteries have 3200 milliampere hours. 
Want to sit even longer? Well then just buy a few 18650 batteries with significantly more capacity from third party suppliers. In addition to the housing shape and design, the button layout matches the TB630. Up here is my menu button and then my two function buttons which I use to navigate through the menu. The rear button is assigned for selection of color modes and the front button a short press captures while a long press films. I find it good when things are tidy. Up top we have the power button separated from the function buttons. This ensures you don't accidentally turn the device on or off when you don't intend to. On the right side you have a USB-C port. You can transfer video and photo files to your computer instead of your app. You want to see images from the hunting ground, you want to see pigs. We'll take a look at the images together and then I'll comment on them. So, what can we see here? Let me say up front, the weather conditions were not optimal. It was rainy, drizzly, and that is also reflected in the environmental depiction. But the bodies of the individual animals are wonderfully recognizable. And we also see that the large animals are exclusively sows you can clearly see the suckling marks. This means that any intervention is strictly prohibited there. So here you see my beloved and preferred sepia mode. By the way, I also use it on my handheld device. This advantage when switching to attachment, the eye doesn't need to get used to different color representation. By the way, you can use the black hot mode on almost all devices when you have bad weather conditions because then the overexposure, that slight corona around the image body is somewhat limited and you can see details more clearly when they are unclear to you. Small downside is surroundings are displayed very brightly. It's not suitable for long-term observation. To provide clarity and certainty, the mode is very good. Here, a few young troublemakers now take the stage and cause quite a ruckus at the baiting site. You can clearly see the distinction here. The yearlings have very long legs and a very, very flat belly line. Occasionally, you can also spot the beginnings of a little brush. So here, you could very confidently identify the right piece and intervene. Here again are the three right axes separately. You can clearly see, as mentioned, the flat belly line and the rather sporty appearance of the three protagonists. As you can see, the image performance of the TB430 is absolutely good. The detailed depiction of the game body makes identification easy and gives the hunter confidence in the decision to shoot or keep the finger off the trigger. So how do I attach the device to my weapon? Well, at the back there is a standard 33.5 mm thread and with that I can attach the device to my weapon using a Husan adapter, a precise hunting adapter, a Venari duo connector or a connector from AP Arms. There are numerous and various ways to adapt the TB430 to my weapon in different ways. That means I get a really, really good thermal imaging attachment. Small, light, compact, long battery life, good image quality.